Hi there. Thank you for your uh, patience. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, so good afternoon. Thank you for being here. I'm Wendy Sherman, the Deputy Secretary of State and the host of today's trilateral. Republic of Korea First Vice Foreign Minister Che, Japanese Vice Foreign Minister Mori and I just concluded our second constructive trilateral meeting at our level since President Biden took office. We held our first wide-ranging trilateral meeting at the vice ministerial level in Tokyo in July, and it was an honor to welcome my counterparts and friends to Washington today. I want to note at the outset that, as has been the case for some time, there are some bilateral differences between Japan and the Republic of Korea that are continuing to be resolved. And one of those differences, which is unrelated to today's meeting, has led to the change in format for today's press availability. Nonetheless, we had a very constructive trilateral meeting today which demonstrates exactly why the trilateral format with the United States, Japan, and the Republic of Korea is so important and powerful. America's deep and enduring relationships with our allies and partners are one of our greatest strengths. For decades, our alliances with Japan and the Republic of Korea have been central to promoting peace, security, and prosperity in the Indo-Pacific and beyond. Now we are deepening our trilateral cooperation, collaboration, and partnership to address the most pressing challenges of the 21st century. We are working together to address the climate crisis, investing in clean energy, clean transportation, and resilient infrastructure in our own countries and across the Indo-Pacific. Because we know we can go further, faster, by acting together. We are working together to end the COVID-19 pandemic, including by donating millions of vaccine doses bilaterally and through COVAX to third countries in need. And we are working together to build back better from the pandemic in our own countries and around the world, including creating jobs and improving our national security by building more secure and resilient supply chains. Today's trilateral meeting was friendly, constructive, substantive, and lasted more than three hours. Vice Foreign Minister Mori, First Vice Foreign Minister Che, and I covered a wide range of economic, security, and regional issues, including our mutual commitment to advancing our shared democratic values and upholding human rights. We discussed our three countries' commitment to maintaining an inclusive, free, peaceful, stable, an open Indo-Pacific region, and our opposition to activities that undermine, destabilize, or threaten the rules-based international order. We discussed the importance of respecting international law in the Indo-Pacific, including maintaining freedom of navigation and overflight in the South China Sea and the East Sea, and of preserving peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. We reiterated our country's support for ASEAN centrality and the ASEAN-led regional architecture. The United States, Japan, and the Republic of Korea all recognize the important economic and security role played by ASEAN nations, including in maintaining a free and open Indo-Pacific, and we are committed to working in partnership with ASEAN. We also discussed our shared commitment to the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. As we have said publicly, the United States does not harbor hostile intent toward the DPRK. We believe that diplomacy and dialogue are essential to achieving the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and establishing a permanent peace. I want to thank First Vice Foreign Minister Che and Vice Foreign Minister Mori again for traveling to Washington for this important trilateral meeting so we can continue to make progress on these and many other issues. I very much look forward to our third trilateral in the new year. Thank you and I look forward to your questions. For our first question, we'll go to Nike Ching of Voice of America. Thank you so much. Uh, Madam Sec Deputy Secretary Sherman, South Korean high-ranking officials 
um, have said that U.S. and South Korea have reached agreement on end of war declaration. Could you please provide more details? <clears throat> also, do you have anything or is there a plan to break the stalemate and include North Koreans back to the negotiation table? If I may, uh, the following is on behalf of other coworkers who are not here. At the recent CSIS event, our case first Vice Foreign Minister Choi described China as a strategic partner for the ROK, and he underscored that ROK trade volume with China is larger than ROK's trade volume with the US and Japan combined. So the question is, could you please shed some light on what discussions you have with Korean and Japanese officials regarding dealing with potential crisis in the Taiwan Strait? Would their economic <laughs> relationship with China prevent them from aligning with the United States? Thank you very much. So everyone, I think, is supposed to have one question. Uh, uh, and so I don't want you to uh, set an example that is bad for your colleagues. Uh, but let me briefly answer you. On um, uh, the issue around end of war uh, statement, uh, I'm very satisfied, the United States is very satisfied with the consultations we are having both with the Republic of Korea and with uh, Japan and with other allies and partners on the best way forward to ensure the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and I look forward to those continued consultations. Uh, regarding uh, the People's Republic of China, uh, we of course uh, discussed uh, all kinds of matters uh, today including our relationship with the People's Republic of China. I think you're all well aware that President Biden just her held a virtual uh, meeting with uh, President Xi Jinping of China. Uh, and I think that we are all agreed that uh, there are areas in which we are cooperating with the PRC. Uh, there are areas where we will compete and compete vigorously. Uh, and there are areas where we will challenge uh, the PRC when our interests uh, diverge and when we think there are risks to uh, peace and security and prosperity uh, for the world. Uh, what I think is very important is that uh, the United States, uh, Korea and Japan uh, are of one mind in our uh, work uh, together uh, to ensure global uh, prosperity, peace and security for citizens in every country. For our next question, we're going to go to Hiroshi Tajima of Yomiuri Shimbun. And if, yeah, go Thank ahead. Thank you. I, I ask this on behalf of Japanese media. My name is Tajima uh, of the Yomiuri Shimbun. In recent months, North Korea has repeatedly launched missiles posing a threat to regional security. How do you plan to deal with easing tensions while striving for denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula, spe specifically through the lens of cooperation between the US, South Korea, and Japan? I'd also like to ask for your thought on South Korea's proposal of formal declaration of the end of the Korean War. Do you agree or disagree to have the declaration at this timing? Lastly, in light of the virtual US-China summit, I'd like to ask how the three nations plan to cooperate with each other trilaterally on policy toward China, particularly on jointly upholding the rule-based international order. Thank you. Uh, so um, there is no question that uh, Japan, South Korea, and the United States all agree that we need to stay compliant with UN Security Council resolutions that impose sanctions on North Korea for launching uh, missiles that it should not. Uh, we look at each of these instances, we coordinate and consult with each other and make sure that we are taking the appropriate action. Uh, there is no um, uh, sense whatsoever uh, that we will do anything but apply sanctions uh, make statements, uh, join with others uh, when North Korea takes actions that violate uh, those resolutions and uh, create uh, risks uh, for our nations uh, and for nations around the world. Uh, on end of war, I've already 
made a statement uh, to one of uh, your journalistic colleagues that we are having uh, good uh, consultations amongst us and with other allies and partners, and we will continue to do so. Uh, and regarding uh, the People's uh, Republic of China, uh, we have had uh, deep uh, and ongoing coordination and consultation, uh, appreciating that we all have different uh, kinds of relationships, uh, but we are all strong democratic nations that believe in the rule of law. We believe in the rules-based international order, which allowed countries to rise, including China, uh, and so we believe that the PRC should live by that rules-based international order, uh, and we will continue to work together collectively uh, to keep those rules in place. And for our last question, we'll go to Hyun Yong Park of Jungang Ilbo. Hello, I'm Hyun Yong Park with Jungang Ilbo. Um, I'll have to ask you, I'll have to phrase a different question. Um, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said last month that um, we may have somewhat different perspectives on the precise sequence or timing or conditions for different steps on the end of war declaration discussions between US and South Korea. Vice Minister Che, upon his arrival to DC last Sunday, said that he expected a good result from discussions with the US on the end of war declaration proposal in the not too distant future. So we have this different sentiment um, from both sides. So my question is, did the US and South Korea resolve their somewhat different perspectives on the sequence timing or conditions? If so, what would be the background that US came to the conclusion that this is a viable proposition at this point? Will you be announcing something soon? So what I have said and will repeat is that we are having ongoing consultations and coordination with the Republic of, Japan, uh, Republic of Korea and Japan and other interested allies and partners. Uh, and uh, I think that whenever we all consult and coordinate with each other, we always come out with a good result uh, that ensures the interests of each of our countries and the overall interest of the world in peace and security. And with that, we've reached the end of our press briefing today. I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Secretary Sherman for being here with us. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you all, and have a good rest of the day. Thank you.